All right, well, we're going to insert and show you a little bit on the inside of the joint. Uh, before we do, let me highlight just some portal placements. Um, for my placements, I, I always use a distractor uh, for most of these cases, but on that note, if it's a trauma case, you're not wanting to do all of that. Again, the ease of just putting this in with a needle and not having to do all the setup of a distractor is, is again, one benefit to using the nano needle. Uh, if I'm doing, say, uh, it's an ankle stabilization, I want to scope, we'll, we'll use that as a situation today. I do always outline the medial malleolus, the inferior border here. This is the tibialis anterior tendon. You can feel the edge, kind of that medial edge. And about a, a finger width up, I make a medial, anterior medial portal. Uh, angling back into the joint here. It's a nice safe spot. Angling towards the fibula as I insert instruments uh, uh, to establish that first portal. I always start on the anterior medial. I've outlined the superficial perineal nerve here. We want to avoid that throughout the entirety of our procedure. Anterior lateral portal as well, just being able to instrument and do some work. If you need to reach further for other uh, spurs, you can come even further lateral as well. So there's portal placement. We'll move forward. We're using the high flow sheath. We'll remove this and insert our nano needle. It does kind of click into position. We'll turn on our fluid and we'll look around a little bit and show you guys a couple things here. We'll switch over to the inside of the joint here. Okay. So basically you can see just first off, we're inside the ankle joint, but how quickly I can get to the back. Whereas normally that's harder to do. Uh, the smaller uh, 2.7 um, scopes bottom out and the larger 4.0s sometimes can't fit in here, but I'm easily all the way to the very back of the tibial tailor joint. So you can see the difference in having such a smaller instrument. And also you, you get a, a feel of that wide view um, and just straight on and not looking around the corners with this. So, okay, so we're looking at the tibia above, the talus below. We're inserting in our, our nano shaver and we do have a little bit of some synovitis I scope every ankle stabilization uh, because they typically, nearly 100% of the time, will have synovitis. So we'll work some of this out. And you can see the picture quality. I mean, this is cool technology, especially being such a tiny little scope to have that kind of quality here and the ease of just using this on the iPad. If I want to, I can turn the, the microphone on and tell the patient, this is all the scar tissue and inflammation that you've developed over years of spraining your ankle and just work around. You can see even though this this little saber shaver is a small shaver, it's still very aggressive and, and works nicely. And I'll, we'll use it to show some diagnostic purposes or value of it as well here. So I just wanted to show you, I left all the synovitis uh, when we first entered the joint so that I could show you uh, just how quickly and easily that works. I do love how smooth it is in entering the joint without these teeth that will, will scar the cartilage. So smaller, smoother, but still aggressive and great suction. Uh, you know, one thing while we're here is just coming back, you can see how we can work towards the back of the joint, clearing out any synovitis or herniation of the syndesmosis. Uh, one thing I think we all should be documenting based on the papers that we have now is the syndesmosis, especially in the setting of ankle instability. And so based on several papers, one being Guyton's paper, which talks about the ability to insert a three millimeter probe into the syndesmosis would be indicative that you now have global instability laterally, medially with the deltoid and the syndesmosis. And so I always just come up and say, okay, can I insert instruments into the syndesmosis? And on this patient, it's negative. And I would document that in the op report and say the syndesmosis w appeared intact. I could not insert uh, my shaver into the syndesmosis. Uh, Arthrex also has probes that come at various sizes that you can use to put in there as well. And you'll be surprised if you do that every once in a while, you'll run into one where I did not realize, hey, they have some syndesmotic instability and you can slip that shaver up in between the tibia and fibula and you should be placing tight ropes or an anterior uh, AITFL internal brace. I'll also come to the front of the fibula here and just push on it from front to back. And you can see that syndesmosis is nice and tight there. If that was unstable, you'd be able to see a little anterior to posterior translation. But also just highlighting again the saber shaver, how I can get up into these little tight areas and just kind of clean some of this stuff out here. So but there you go, that's, that's the arthroscopy portion of, of this um, demonstration. Let me switch the portals and we'll talk just a minute a bit, little bit further about something I'm excited about when it comes to ankle stabilization and making decisions on which ligaments need to be uh, which need to be repaired. Justin, I, you, you and I have had several conversation and 
conversations and working on projects together. So I've switched the portals. I usually, for me, um, I do like to have the, the flat part basically facing up towards the tibia or the patient's head, and that gets me oriented on the camera. Uh, so I know that I'm looking up at the tibia. It just helps me keep orientation within the joint. Switching portals here. Come around to the medial side. Get our shaver in. Still a little bit of some synovitis that we can work on. Let me clean that up a little bit further. And then, uh, you know, let's talk a bit about the deltoid. I've, I've got some data that I'm about to, it's actually been submitted for publication, finding the incidence of the deltoid being involved in ankle instability. And we're finding it's 20 to 30%, which is a lot higher than I previously was repairing. So we're working on techniques to diagnose, basically identify when that actually needs to be repaired. And in the trauma world, they've called it a drive-through sign. And in the acute setting, we th that's, I think, still very applicable and appropriate. And what that looks like is if you come over here to the medial gutter, and you take a shaver, I usually, you know, in an ankle scope, we'll use even up to a four millimeter shaver. But you can come over and you can peek around the corner and you can look down at the deltoid and see if it's torn or do this drive-through sign in, in the medial gutter. And if your shaver fits in between, if you can take and insert it here, just as we've done, down in between there, and it fits quite easily. And so just to give you a heads up, I did release a good portion of the deltoid just in preparation so I could show you this maneuver. But it, this, and, and this is a smaller shaver, but as you can see, that fits. So if I have a four millimeter shaver and that fits in there, we know that, that deltoid is a little bit incompetent. There's a little bit of some subtle instability. Maybe it's not gross instability with severe valgus tilting, but there's a little more global instability from medially to laterally. So that's the drive-through sign. You know, you'll see papers starting to come out. We have data we're publishing on this. We actually validated this in the lab uh, in the last couple of months. Uh, but this is the medial drive-through sign. And even you can sometimes just take the shaver and even just push and see the medial side open up at times. So wanted to highlight that as well, some of the diagnostic things. If you're not scoping your ankle stabilizations, you're missing out on a lot of pathology. And uh, th there's nothing worse than having a nice stable ankle that still hurts from all the synovitis still in there. Document the syndesmosis, that it's intact and stable. You can document, of course, osteochondral defects, frequent things we encounter in ankle st instability. And then the deltoid, was the drive-through sign negative or was it positive? And if it is, I encourage you to go. We use a couple of fiber tacks typically here. The new DX knotless fiber tacks work well to do a medial deltoid repair.